Hello, my name is Guido Junti. I'm a medical doctor and senior researcher at the University of Oulu and TU Delft. And I'm here to talk to you about the work that we have done called informing the product development of an AM Health solution for people with multiple sclerosis through early health technology assessment. Now, M Health is the Hello, my name is Guido Junti and I'm a medical doctor and senior researcher at the University of Oulu and TU Delft. And I'm here to tell you a bit about the work that we have done on informing the product development of an M Health solution for people with multiple sclerosis through early health technology assessment. Now, as most of you know, uh, M Health is the delivery of healthcare or healthcare related services to the use of mobile devices. And it basically encompasses the use of mobile applications, but also of activity trackers, sensors, wearables, and other kinds of devices that uh, are connected through uh, the different mobile aspects. There has been quite an explosion in, in the area of mobile health in the, uh, lately. Uh, as you can see here in the screen, there's this report from 2015 that talks about how there was already over 160,000 different mobile applications uh, for health, but uh, current estimations place this at almost double. We're talking about over 300,000. Uh, what's really interesting is that according to the current estimates, the same uh, distribution stands. There's only 10% of these are disease specific or, or specific to one particular condition, whereas the large majority stand in this fitness or well-being area. Uh, what's interesting about this is that uh, even though the, the percentages are quite uh, significant, uh, we are seeing a larger trend towards more and more disease-specific devices. And it's interesting to start to explore how can we integrate this into our current healthcare systems. And that's where uh, we believe uh, that uh, the health technology assessment could be a key player for us to approach this. Now, health technology assessment is the systematic evaluation of the properties, effects, or impacts of a health technology. The whole concept behind this is that it's a way to inform decision makers in order to support the introduction of these new technologies in the market or into the healthcare services. And if you use these uh, methods early enough, it's something that is known as early health technology assessment. And some believe that uh, the use of early health technology assessment can help product development, especially in the areas of digital health. Um, in Finland, we have uh, created a framework called DGHDA, which is an assessment tool that uh, is especially designed to support the novel digital healthcare technologies. And in this way, it incorporates aspects such as robotics, uh, uh, security or AI aspects that are not commonly found in other health technology frameworks. And the way that it works is that uh, once uh, someone sub submits this, uh, their product or their currently available uh, solution, a group of experts will score the different domains of uh, the solution, whether this being in effectiveness, cost, safety, usability, data security and protection. And then they will uh, score the different domains from minus four to, to, to two. And the idea is that this will provide an overall score that uh, indicates what, whether the device is recommended or requires further consideration or whether there are critical issues that need to be addressed before actual use of this. Now, uh, we decided to use this DGHTA framework uh, and apply it as an early health technology assessment tool to uh, a particular solution that we've been working here at the University of Oulu called More Stamina. Now, More Stamina is a digital health solution that's designed to help people with a mess manage their fatigue. The way that it works is, uh, to put it simply, uh, it's, it, from the patient perspective, it acts as a gamified to-do list where the person starts with 100 points of energy each day, and then they start dividing their activities, whether going cycling or singing and so on, and they estimate whether this is going to take five or 10 or 15 points of their energy. But the idea is that as they start using this, 
uh, the app uses behavioral change techniques to guide them and create a personalized recommendation based on how tired they are after each of these activities. We use the information gathered from the sensors of the mobile device, from weather conditions and other aspects to create this an integrated uh, solution that can provide these recommendations. And we further use all of this aggregated data to understand new aspects of the conditions, such as uh, what, are the, what is the influence of the weather, what are the influence of the different times or periods of the physical activity, so that we can learn more about the patient and the quality of life that they can have. What's interesting about this particular uh, solution is that we've been following a, a user-centered design approach, but uh, not only that, we've also been doing what we call an evidence-driven approach. Uh, this means that every step of the way is something that uh, is based on the evidence, generates evidence, and follows the evidence. What we mean by this is that we didn't start this process by deciding that we want to build an app for people with MS, but quite the contrary, we were just exploring whether uh, technology could be of use for people with MS. So we did uh, qualitative studies with them and that created a specific need. Based on that, we followed a systematic review of what are the currently available solutions. We created co-design sessions and then we designed a, a, a prototype and so on and so forth. And each step of the way has created an evidence uh, in, the, in the form of a scientific publication and has actually guided our process. So in this case, we're using more stamina as an instrumental case study by which we are applying DCHTA as a framework for early health technology assessment. Now, what's really interesting about this is that by applying the DCHTA uh, methods early on in the case that we have only a prototype, it has helped us identify very clear weaknesses or very clear sensitive areas from our project that we needed to identify early on. So for example, uh, the fact that we need to have a, a very defined intended purpose for our solution is something that we knew from a, a more of an intuitive point of view, but when you try to actually get your solution to match the framework's uh, perspectives, you figure out that there's actually not a definition. And this ties almost uh, completely with the findings that you will have if you need to get it approved as a medical device according to the current regulations. Further, there is the need for a clinical outcome uh, and in the form of uh, some kind of a trial or some sort of study. And we are currently doing pilot studies to understand the accessibility and feasibility of this solution. But this clearly uh, means that we need to keep furthering towards a clinical trial or a, some sort of methodology that is much more about clinical research. An interesting finding in this case is the lack of a business model. Uh, very often this kind of solution mostly exists uh, as the result of a funding or a grant that was given and we usually pay very little attention to what happens with the solution after the funding is over. The fact that we were forced to consider these situations uh, as a result of confronting our prototype to an HTA framework uh, has made us understand the need of defining a model, uh, business model and do a, a thorough business value chain analysis. The need for cybersecurity is, is, of course, uh, a must in the approach of anything that requires personal health data. And in the same way, we need to understand that with interoperability standards, in which we need to understand that uh, if we're creating an uh, e-health or digital health solution, there has to be a way in which this interfaces with the standard ways that uh, hospitals or healthcare centers do, in this case with electronic health records. The accessibility and usability issues uh, were quite interesting to explore because while our solution has been following this user-centered design approach, it's interesting that uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have created a solution that is 100% compliant to the accessibility guidelines. So that's uh, an issue that we were able to discover as a result of this. And finally, what was very interesting was the fact that Currently, from the healthcare professional's perspective and the patient perspective themselves, how our solution works and how the algorithms actually work inside 
can be basically considered as a black box. There's, there's no description of how the decisions are made or there's no uh, way of uh, informing people why a certain recommendation was suggested at a certain time. Uh, and this uh, goes to this uh, evasive term of a black box, which is quite dangerous when we're talking about uh, health technology. Now, as a response to this uh, early health technology assessment, this has allowed us to create a new roadmap for more stamina as a product development cycle, in which we're starting to plan a case control methodology for evaluating the health outcomes of this uh, solution. We are uh, putting in place a post-market surveillance strategy so that we would understand how to deal with the real life situations of having this solution out there in the wild. And we have in, in, integrated iterative UX and UI evaluations so that we are constantly trying to uh, work out how can we, we can improve the UI and UX so that it's easier for this population and stays current with the, the, the different design strengths that are at the moment. We have now planned to do uh, uh, studies for integrating the more stamina with the Oulu University Hospital Test Lab and the ESCO EHR system. And this is using the HL7 interfaces uh, through the smart on fire uh, approach. And finally, in regards to the AI transparency, we are creating a way in which as a user of this uh, solution, you will be informed uh, about what are the actions or what are the steps that led you to get this recommendation. And in the same way that the healthcare professionals will understand uh, what are the issues that they are uh, that can guide their own decision-making. What's interesting about, about using DGHTA as, uh, as a means is that it has allowed us to understand basically how uh, the different areas where we had a weakness in our, in our solution could be improved. And this here in the screen that you can see in green is basically how uh, taking these steps that were suggested by the DGHTA framework can allow us to improve the overall scoring, scoring in the different systems. Uh, we believe that the, the type of uh, uh, early health technology assessment could be very useful in guiding not only uh, solutions like more stamina, but others and make it so that they become more compliant with the current regulations and an easier adoption and penetration to the market. Uh, so this is a, a very interesting area to explore as we are going to be seeing more and more of these solutions come to the market. Thank you so much for your attention. Please feel free to contact me for more information about this project and other ideas.